An organization named the Young Adult Community for Crohn's and Colitis, or YACCC for short, contacted me about needing a website as they were a new organization and they didn't have a website yet. At that point, their entire online existence was based off of their Instagram account. Their Instagram had everything in it, like upcoming events, links, and more. But if they were to get a new site, they would have a lot more freedom to have the stuff that they wanted, and more. After speaking with them, I found that they were very passionate people about their work, and the organization reflected that. So I took on making a website for them. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly the process I took to make their WordPress website, and the thoughts I had while making the design and development decisions. I'll try to explain as much UX and UI decision making as much as possible, as well as some on the web developer side, like trying to consider the best way to go about implementing stuff and the order of which I do them. So I hope you get something from it, whether it's about design or development. To start off making a website for them, I needed to know exactly what they wanted first. They told me they specifically wanted the homepage layout similar to a site I had made in the past, Anik Alam Learning House. The layout I made for them is my particular favorite as I think it does a good job of introducing who the website is about, what they offer, and works into some kind of funnel to get users into some sort of conversion. I actually made an entire video about this specific layout and why it's so effective, which I'll link in the description if you're interested. They also had some design requirements, like using the brand guideline colors, and to follow a couple different website examples they provided me that they liked. But overall, they said they wanted the design of the website to be minimal. Which leads me into the development side. Whenever clients say the word minimal, right away I think of the salient WordPress theme. Clients love this shit. I, I don't know what it is about salient that makes people love it so much, but it seems to tickle people in all the right areas. So I knew that would be the theme I'd be using. As for the pages, it would be a five page website, home, about, events, advocacy, and contact. Considering the events would be text based and not needing any kind of plugin, the site wouldn't have any special functionality beyond a basic contact form. I started off with the company startup demo import because I thought it would be a good foundation for me to start from. When I'm picking from the different demo imports, I always try to find the one that most aligns and has the elements that I'm probably going to be using. Usually themes have a lot of shit that just looks pretty but isn't actually useful, so I try to find ones without those and so there's less work to set up the pages. With this demo import style, I knew I'd make use of the hero section, as it looks like the one from the homepage layout that I wanted, and the call to action section at the bottom. After the import, I usually begin tweaking the theme settings to customize the things like the header layout, colors, fonts, and of course to immediately disable the preload animation and the smooth scrolling as fast as possible. Once all the settings are good, I start working on the site. Unfortunately, after the demo import, I got a bunch of PHP errors which I had to fix. I don't even remember what the problem was at this point, but I remember it had something to do with the WordPress core. So after a half hour of debugging, I could finally start working on the site. After fixing the errors, I started on the homepage. I usually spend a lot of time designing and setting up the homepage first, as it sets the tone and the style for the rest of the website. When I work on the homepage, I will usually do the top navigation as well as the footer, basically making the homepage completely finished when it's done. Obviously the footage is sped up, but here I probably spent an hour and a half just on the homepage alone trying to come up with the design style that will set the stage for the entire site. And if I'm not being dumb and actually remember to think ahead a little bit, I also make sure that all the rows are responsive before I start duplicating them for other pages. Because the page builder with salient is WP Bakery, it's a pain in the ass to make it responsive with the builder, so I usually end up adding quite a lot of custom code to make sure the padding is responsive. However, Salient does use a modified version of WP Bakery, so it adds in a couple helpful options to make it responsive without having to use your own CSS. I also ended up getting some icons for the homepage as well, off a website I use called flaticon.com. One thing that I like to do when using WordPress themes is I take a hard look at what plugins come pre-installed. If you're a good WordPress developer, you want to use as little plugins as possible. This is good practice for many reasons, like, generally speaking, the more plugins you have, the slower your site is. 
There are plugins that have no effect on your website speed, like File Manager or Smush, because they're based in the back end. But ideally, the less plugins you have, the better. Now, Salient is a bit of a motherfucker when it comes to plugins, because it comes with nine plugins that are required to have the whole functionality of the theme. With the site, I ended up using 12 plugins, with six of them just being from Salient. But after all that work so far, here's what the homepage looks like. It hits all the things they wanted to follow, like using the homepage layout from that one site, to use the brand colors, and to have a minimal design. Overall, it's an effective homepage. It clearly states what the organization is about without needing to go through all the site's pages. It clearly links and mentions the other important pages on the site, so if a user were to come on not knowing what they want to learn in particular, they can see an overview and go to a specific page from there. Now I think some small parts on the homepage will change the more I work on the site, like some text size tweaks or some button styles, but for the most part this is the design the homepage landed on. Now let's talk about the footer for a second, because it's an important part of every website. So this is a five page website, and I see it all the time where people, just because it's not a massive website, they will neglect to put page links or even effort into the footer just because it's a small site. This is obviously a mistake. The footer is an important part of any site, and people actually use it, which I spoke about in my Everything About Footers video, if you're interested. With this footer, I stuck to mostly the same layout I would normally use, but altered a bit because the client requested to have a footnotes area in the footer. But it has four columns. It starts with a logo, and then it links to all the pages of the site, and then it has the footnotes, and then some contact information. Because they had a lot of focus on their Instagram for their online presence, I also added the social media icons as well. Just like the homepage, the footer is simple and effective. It provides users with helpful links and even gives you a summary of what the organization is about for extra clarity. After the homepage, I worked on the about page next. The content they gave me for the about page looks like this. It had quite a bit of paragraph text with some team members they wanted to add. They also didn't have any of the team member bios at the time of development, so they requested that the design be open to having them in the future. So because I had no idea how long these bios would be, I went with a vertical layout, which could accommodate any size. I ended the page with a CTA that I borrowed from the homepage, and the about page was done. Here's what it ended up looking like. This layout isn't exactly cutting edge design, but it works perfectly for what they want. The content is clearly displayed with no distractions. There were also some icons I added to break up the two sections and for visual appeal. Looking back at it, if I were to improve this page, I would add more photos of real team members together, and then I would complete the photos and bios for each of the members. This would go a long way to make a more impactful page, but this is something that they can always change later. The next page I made was the advocacy page which is just an informational page, just like the about page. And here's the content for it. This page was pretty quick to make. You can see at the top of the content, they have this one sentence copy. I thought to make the page more visually interesting and actually more impactful, I would make it a highlight text. So it would be a bit bigger and it would stand out more. And here's how that ended up looking like. Then for the rest of the content, I paired it up with some images so there wouldn't be a wall of text. And lastly, I slapped the CTA at the bottom, just like all the other pages so far. The events page was done also very fast. They didn't want anything too complex, so they didn't have any need for an events plugin. So I made it text-based, where they could easily come in and change the text whenever they had an upcoming event. As you can see, I also added another image to prevent an unpleasant wall of text. And the last page was the contact page, which ended up looking like this. It starts off with the newsletter sign up with a contact form underneath, and then some links to some social media. Simple, but it works. And that's the site. I was happy with the way it turned out, and the YA triple C was also as well. After I finished the first phase of the site, they only had a few revisions to get the site exactly the way they wanted, which was good. And I launched it pretty quickly afterwards. I hope that with their new website, the organization can grow and positively impact more people. If you want to become a better web designer or developer, check out the rest of my videos. And thank you for a thousand subscribers. Until next time, disable smooth scrolling and stop making shit websites.